Hey everyone, good morning. It's Mark Wiens with Migrationology.com. I'm in Bangkok, Thailand, and Ying and I just took the BTS to Victory Monument, which is, you can see the monument in back of me, but this is a famous landmark um, and transportation hub in Bangkok. From here, we're gonna go jump on a bus and do some things today. Victory Monument in Bangkok is one of the main transportation hubs in the city. And so you can catch a bus somewhere around this roundabout uh, to anywhere you want to go in the farthest regions of Bangkok. Once you pay for the bus, you'll get a ticket like this. And I think this ride costs uh, 13 baht, which is like 50 cents. And we are on our way towards Dusit, a big government area in Bangkok. That is an incredibly colorful assortment of iced beverages. All right, Kapun Kab. When you buy a water in Thailand, you will always get a straw to drink it from, and it will always come in a plastic bag as well. Today we are doing research more for the update of the Bangkok ebook, and right now we are walking through the Win Man Mae Mansion, which is the Teakwood Mansion, but we're actually not gonna stop here. Uh, we've been here, I've already been here a couple times and I really do like it. Um, but we are just walking through to get to the Abisek Throne, Dus Abisek Dusit Throne Hall. This sign is pretty funny. It says, please wait. The office is going to the toilet. Got the ticket, and the ticket costs 100 baht, but it also includes the Win Man Mae Mansion, as well as the Abisek Dusit Throne Hall. Before the throne hall was built, the King of Thailand spent uh, some time in Europe. And so he came back to Thailand and built this throne hall, and he still had many of the ideas that he gathered with him when he was in Europe. So you can see from the architecture and also the elaborate design and decoration that the throne hall is very European in style, uh, but at the same time on the inside is very Thai. And so he really uh, combined both European and Thai architecture and style and design in when he made the throne hall. The guard told me I couldn't stand in the grass. Only about 100 meters away from the Abisek throne hall is the Ananta Samakom throne hall. And this is a neoclassical structure that was built during the reign of King Rama V. I always drive past it, but I've never been inside, so that's the reason I wanted to come check it out today. It is very impressive inside, and there were a lot of people as well. Uh, but they are very, very strict with photography, so could not take a photos of anything. You have to leave all your stuff in a locker. Inside, there are many different thrones on the top level, as well as uh, if you look up on the top of the, the ceiling of the building are some beautiful paintings. We visited two attractions. Uh, both were very nice to see, but definitely the Ananta Samakom throne hall was spectacular, but also extremely busy. Now we are just taking a walk and we are looking for something to eat for lunch. We're heading to a boat noodle restaurant, but it has just started raining. Okay, my camera is getting wet. I better duck inside of here. Send me like a send leg, cup. made it to this little restaurant called Kwe Tiao Rua Nai Pum. Kwe Tiao Rua are boat noodles, which are really famous in Thai cuisine, and it's probably the number one Thai favorite noodle soup to eat, and always trying to find the best one in Bangkok. But so this is a one that I've never been to, and you can either order uh, beef or pork. I think in the pink bowl is the pork. Is this on the porking? I think it's the pork. And then this is Sen Mi, which are these, the thin type of noodles. And you can just see, look at that, I already can tell this is going to be a good one because just look at the richness and the curdled blood of that broth. Then there are pieces of morning glory in here and I got to taste a little bit. Actually, let me go with a spoon first and just taste that broth before I before I season. Oh, that is a dark, rich broth though. Oh, that is stunning. Oh, that barely needs any seasoning. It is, it's already sour. 
It's not sweet at all. Um, it has a little bit of a chili flavor to it and extremely rich. Well, that's excellent, but I will add a little more chili. And I'll probably dress my other bowl at the same time. This one is a different noodle, and this one is either the beef or pork, but it's also, but it's the same, the same exact soup. Oh, and, and I took, I took too long to take some photos, so they're starting to, they're starting to like stick together, but that's okay, they'll still taste amazing. Okay, let me go back to my other bowl though. And usually I add a bunch of scoops of vinegar, but it's already pretty sour. That's awesome. And you can also take some cab mu, which is um, crispy fried pork skin. Lots of people like to take these. And you can just put it into your bowl. And just kind of, well, you can either just eat it whole or you can just kind of squash it up and let it absorb all of that delicious broth. Oh, you can actually hear, I don't know if you can hear it on the microphone, but you can hear that actually crackling as it hits the soup. Oh, and if you, if you like get some soup and put that together, combine it and take a bite, it's just insane. Oh. That's awesome. That's just crispy pork skin with all that rich, succulent broth. Oh man, that's delicious. And then for my last bowl, I got bami, which is egg noodles in the same soup, and I got it with beef. I think the beef is actually the best here. There are a lot of boat noodle restaurants in central Bangkok now that just do not have that kind of flavor and they don't have that kind of richness. That was delicious and the owner who is a grandma said that she has been making boat noodles there for over 40 years uh, and she is also extremely nice. Now we are walking down the street and we're going to a famous place where they have sticky rice and fried pork. And Ying and I actually came here, I think it's probably been four or five years ago when, when we came here last. Oh, I can smell that like sweet fried pork aroma. Muan, which is some kind of sweet pork. This is uh, liver. And then this one is the regular Mu Tan, which is just the fried pork. But this place is really famous for their kaniao, their sticky rice, because oftentimes if you make sticky rice and then just leave it to sit, it will get crusty. But here they, they say that they have a secret recipe where it does not get crusty and it just stays fresh forever. Or at least for 24 hours they say, right? So this is the, we got black sticky rice and then Ying Ko show the Mu Thaan cup. And then we also just got the fried pork. That just smells incredible. Oh, that's a huge piece. Or is it all sticking together? Okay, that's like a pork steak. Oh, just look at that. Oh yeah, that's awesome. Just nice and salty like soy sauce, kind of a soy sauce glaze. And you have to follow it by sticky rice. That is an absolute must. Oh, I can just feel in my fingers that sticky rice is like, it's softer and you can feel the grains more than typical sticky rice. Oh yeah, that combination is just a, a marriage. Yeah, that is just as good as I remember when we ate here years ago. Mmm, that is finger looking good. Ying and I are definitely gonna finish off this entire bag of fried pork. We're at the bus stop now waiting for a bus to go to Sanam Luang, which is near to the Khao San Road area um, and the Grand Palace. And we're gonna go to the National Museum but we don't know which bus to take yet, so we're just waiting to see which bus comes that we can take. In Bangkok, if you see one of the red buses with a big blue sign at the front, and in Thai it says free, uh, those are free buses, so you can jump on and you can really ride them for free. Uh, but sometimes you have to wait for a long time, but if you get lucky like we just did, 
they just come by. We are approaching the National Museum, and the Mu National Museum is over on this side, but then over on this side across the street is called Sanam Luang, which is the big park, and on the other side of that park is, you can't see it just because it's behind those trees, is the Grand Palace. But we are going to go to the National Museum right now. We are in the National Museum now. And it consists of a number of different buildings which you can go in, but they don't allow video inside, so I don't think I'll be able to get any video. So I'll just show you from the outside, but we're gonna go walk around for about an hour probably to see everything. It is a very extensive and very big museum. You can walk into all of these different rooms and there are different exhibitions, uh, some of them having to do with royal memorabilia and then others having to do more with uh, old Khmer temples and um, just all sorts of stuff. If you love museums, this is for sure a place you have to see when you come to Bangkok. The museum was excellent. And from there, we took a walk over to Tanon Din Sa, which is near to the Giant Swing, which is one of my favorite streets. And this whole area, there is just loads of good food. But we're going to go check out a restaurant that is famous for serving fried noodles, um, the thin noodles, with pakashet, which is water mimosa. I'm going to make a full video about this meal, so I just want to give you a quick overview of what we're eating. This one is suki nam, which is a bunch of vegetables with mung bean noodles and served with a, a sauce over there. And this one is tom yam kai jiao chai mai kaing. Tom yam kai jiao nam kon. So that is tom yam soup with kai jiao, which is an omelet in it. But their their signature dish here, which I have already sampled and is ridiculously good, is the mi kachet, which is uh, pad sen mi, which are the really thin rice noodles, uh, stir fried with water mimosa vegetable, and that's delicious. Yum kai jiao, which is tom yum soup with an omelet in it. It is a wonderful creation. And now we are walking over to Sa La Chalum Kung, which is a theater, an old theater, and they have a show which I have never been to but which we are going to tonight and it starts at 7.30 so we're walking over there to buy our tickets now. And this is one of the oldest and the most traditional theaters in Bangkok. We have about an hour and a half until the show starts so we're probably just gonna hang out and maybe go to a coffee shop nearby just to chill until the show starts. It's every Thursday and Friday at 7.30 p.m. and they have tickets I believe for 1,200 baht, 1,000 baht and 800 baht depending on where you sit and the position. And we got the 800 baht ticket. We just finished the show, it took two hours. And yeah, they didn't allow any photography or video inside, but now you can take some photos outside. But it was a very good show. Uh, the two hours went by pretty fast. And I really enjoyed the music as well as the costumes are pretty amazing. Now Ying and I are in a taxi on our way home. I'm pretty worn out. Thank you very much for watching this video. Please remember to give it a thumbs up, leave a comment below, and subscribe if you haven't already subscribed, and I'll see you on the next vlog.